are you doing today, sir? How are you, man? I'm good. Uh, so I, I, as I've been asking everyone who I've been talking to recently, uh, how have the last few weeks been for you? Well, uh, so, you know, it, it's been, it's, it's been sort of a, a tossed salad of, um, feelings. Um, one of those being that this is ironically like what I've always dreamed of my world shrinking down to nothing. And, uh, I would have preferred it happened without all the fear and mass fatalities and, um, and, um, just general, oh, oh, and the crashing economy. Uh, but I thrive in these situations. So I've been good. However, I'm, I find myself absolutely terrified of getting this terrified terrified and uh so does that mean so does that mean you haven't have you left the house at all my last not really my last excursion was i went to the pharmacy about a week and a half ago um and that was like i i tweeted about it it was literally like a vegas heist um and uh and i used to go on a we'd go on a walk every morning at the beginning of this thing but I'm now I'm I'm done with the walks too. I haven't even it's been two and a half weeks since I've walked past the boundaries of my meager property. Well, um, I have to ask, what time of day did you go to the pharmacy? That's a good question. I don't know, around uh this time, around midday. See, my thing is I have to go to the pharmacy in the next week or so. And I'm already thinking the only time to go is super early in the morning or incredibly huh. late at night because there's less people out. I don't know. Are you where are you right now? Where are you in L.A. or New York? Yeah, or what? I'm, I'm in I'm in the in the valley. You're all right. So I would say go now because it's raining. Right. Totally. <laughs> yeah. The sure. lines. My I look my house looks down on a Gelson's and I I started this whole journey monitoring the lines hour by hour, literally right. That's how much I needed a job writing right. down, like uh, how many people I could see in line. And uh, I've noticed that, uh, you know, the rain is um, that thins out the line for sure. No, no, you're, you're not wrong. Um, switching gears into something else. You're from Massachusetts. Um, yeah. I am. I am a fellow mass hole. Um, yeah. I have I have to ask um, when I do this with everyone from Massachusetts. Uh, how right. often do you go to the Dunkin' Donuts out here now that there's Dunkins? Well, okay, that's a good question, uh, Stevie. We got a uh, we got a Dunkies up on. Uh, you got to go. So, all right, to get to get to the Dunkies, I'm talking about because there's a di you know there's a difference with Dunkies. Uh, you got to go past the first Dunkies, Route Two. You know, get off San Fernando and, and down at Water Village, there is a great little con of donkeys that knows what they're doing. They, when you say, I want a coffee regular, they put a shitload of sugar in it and a lot of cream. The other donkeys doesn't do that. And, um, and, uh, and I'm going to fight them. <laughs> um, the, worst, the worst part about this bit is that you're 100% right about Dunkin' Donuts locations. Certain ones oh, are better. Oh. I mean, I when they first came to New York, I I strolled right down there. I was like, I want a coffee regular, and they were like, Do you want cream and sugar? And I was like, How dare you! Right. <laughs> I said regular. You pollute that with cream and sugar. I want it to taste like a milkshake. Right. Everyone watching who's never been to Dunkin's has no fucking idea. What oh, they love this. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. It's good. It's good material. Right. Exactly. It's <laughs> as people are hitting stop. <laughs> um, okay, so I've been asking everybody a few quick questions, and then I'm going to jump into why we're actually talking. Uh, okay. what, TV, what TV show would you love to guest star on? Uh, the next Hope Hope season of Twin Peaks. Okay. Uh, what movie have you seen the most? Arthur. Really? Dudley Moore. Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, it, close second is um, The Abyss. These are both, wait, the director's cut or the theatrical cut? 
theatrical. I can't hang with a director's cut. If you're going to watch it over and over again, uh, I just go theatrical. It's what yeah. I know. Uh, what was the last thing that you binged? Oh, my God. Um, binging uh, High Maintenance, man. Shit, that show is good. Uh, I High Maintenance, uh, we, we watched the whole season almost in one sitting. Uh, and now we're binging The Stranger, um, yeah, which is uh, which is pretty excellent. But if, um, I noticed that if you're if you're high, it's not as good. Right. Uh, what was the last thing that you were obsessed with? Oh, geez. I mean, come on, that's crazy. Uh, Mazda's uh, rotary engines. Oh, not kidding. That. I mean, I get I get easily i get easily locked into something um or uh i guess um yeah no i would have to say just cars in general i'm okay. i'm pretty upset right now uh i'm talking to you uh, because you have a new movie coming out on april 17th bad therapy um yeah i have really never done therapy but i know it works for a lot of people i know howard oh. i listen to how i know i listen to howard stern and he swears by it but yeah. i have to i have to ask after seeing the movie, and when therapists see the movie, do you feel like you will ever be allowed back in a therapy office because of the damage <laughs> that the film has done to therapists? I hope that enough people see this movie that it will have uh, some sort of uh, damage. It'll make some damage uh, like that. I, I, uh, I don't, um, I think uh, that's the dream. That's the dream. <laughs> Um, I, you know, most people watching will have not probably seen the trailer or know much about it. So I hate asking the generic thing, but like, what is it about and what drew you to the material? Uh, it's about a couple um, in Los Angeles, a very typical Los Angeles uh, married couple. Um, and uh, they, they uh, have a different, really like, as far as you can tell from the beginning, a different opinion only about whether therapy is valuable <laughs> and um you know that that there's a la is a very important part of it because you know alicia silverstone's character my wife uh gets pulled into sort of what you should be doing and couples therapy is one of them whether you need it or not and she drags my character into it, and it turns out we just re really picked the wrong therapist, played by Michaela Watkins, uh, and she de uh, definitely manipulates us in a really cool, it's my favorite part of the, the movie, is how she sort of manipulates our characters separately and pits us against each other. One of the things, though, is you really filmed in L.A., and it seems to me like more and more things are actually filming in L.A. Have you noticed that? Oh my, yeah, I've noticed it. I mean, my, my Sky Miles account is like decimated, um, but it's great. I got to travel a lot. Nothing shot in LA when I had tiny, tiny baby kids. And, and so I got to travel a lot when, um, during the diaper phase. And now that I really like them and enjoy spending time with them, stuff's shooting here in LA and I, I hardly ever get, have to travel. So it's great. Well, one of the other things about filming in L.A., and I noticed it in this film, is you get to have a lot of um, really good actors playing day players because you are filming in L.A. Yeah, for sure. That's that's de also like not just that, but that's a trickle down thing. You also get like cops who know how to shut down a street, you know, if you got to do a drive by. And you also get people that have this is what they do. They this is our we are a one industry town here. Um, and every other industry know has some relationship to to the film world, and and it's like you're working with a professional every time. Oh, you sorry. know, I, I did a movie once. I shot a movie in uh, New Orleans when New Orleans was really like getting, you know, inviting people to come shoot there. And uh, so many movies were shooting there that are we had to we had to like literally go to the swamp to find an effects team. Uh, a special effects team, and they killed us. They almost killed us. Like I literally got, I almost like lost an eyeball because of them. Uh, so I love LA. I love shooting in LA. 
it's, it's interesting because I spoke to people that were before, obviously, all this stuff was happening um, about filming in London and how you really can't even get a soundstage in London because so much films there now. That'd be great. I've never shot in London. I love that town. I would like to do that. So uh, anybody any directors out there that uh, I don't care what your stupid movie is. Um, <laughs> I don't care what the dumb story is that you're so committed to. If it's shooting in London, I'll do it. Right, exactly. I will. That will be the headline of the article. Uh, <laughs> how, how you want to shoot? Rob London. Cordry calls out to stupid directors with dumb stories. Right. Um, I want to ask this next question very carefully. Um, as it's, I'm just fucking. Ask with it you. dangerously. Um, ask fine. it dangerously. Well, as one of the creators of Medical Police on Netflix, uh, yeah. it's pretty clear that you do know the future uh, since you predicted the virus. Uh, so what do you right. think the next year holds for us? Um, uh, dumb fart jokes. If, if, if we're going by the, uh, you know, the pattern uh, of medical police, um, pattern, then yeah, a lot of, a lot of dick jokes, fart jokes, um, yo mama jokes. I like a lot. Those will probably be in there. Uh, so I, I predict, I'm uh, predicting, and Fauci has hinted at this, but he can't really say outright because Trump's right there. But like, it's a lot of absurd, absurd jokes. Sure, a hundred percent. Um, yeah. I, I'm beginning to think that the doctors on the show could do a better job than Trump. Um, any thoughts? Dude, my, these headphones could do a better job than Trump right now. I, there's, I, there's a number of things here in my office that could do a better job. Uh, I, I mean, what, what, dot, dot, dot. I mean, what else to say about that? That's, it's a shit show. I concur. Um, for people that actually haven't watched Medical Police, uh, I totally want you to plug it. So can you tell people what it's about? Yeah, it's about, um, well, it's a spinoff of uh, Children's Hospital um, that uh, it, it takes two of the doctors and they uh, they are recruited by the CDC, a sort of uh, secret division of the CDC to eradicate a growing pandemic. Um, and uh, they do it with laughter. Right. You were ahead of the curve on this pandemic thing. Well, that's, you know, people have actually, this is no shit. People have actually, there are conspiracy theories out there that two years ago when we started writing this, we knew that this was going to happen and we timed it for promotion's sake. And people have even gone so far as to freeze frame parts of episodes, frames, and, and point out graffiti written on walls in Croatia where we were shooting that said COVID on it. Um, it didn't say COVID. They, this, these are we're talking about. We're talking about like the the tiniest corner of the crazy internet. But it's right. great. It's good well, stuff. I'm sure, I, I'm sure you're loving it. Um, uh, you, yeah. Re- you how with with that show and with the other stuff you've been involved with, like like Children's Hospital, for casting, is it literally you just picking up the phone and texting friends at this point? Um, a lot of the time. A lot of the time it is, yeah. Uh, we have, our casting director has been working with us since day one on, on Children's Hospital. So oftentimes I think like, I think it's more respectful. I don't know, it's case by case. It's more respectful to go through the proper channels uh, it, because we're we're friends, but we're professionals. And, you know, I, I, I frankly prefer to get a call from a, my agent or a casting director rather than having my friend text me going, oh, I am doing this stupid thing. I don't know. We need a ball guy. But, um, uh, but yes, we do sometimes, uh, because oftentimes too, like they won't even have heard about it. If we, if we go through the agents first, a lot of times agents just blanket reject things, not knowing that we have a relationship with these guys. And so then we'll text them and, Say, uh, fire your agent. He sucks. Got it. Uh, I want to jump backwards. If I'm not mistaken, your first film role was old school. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I think so. That or Bobby Duke's Blackballed, the Bobby Duke story. <laughs> you know that oh. movie that you didn't see? 
the, the, the one I didn't see. Well, I want to talk specifically about old school because Go even ahead. if that was even if that was your second movie, that's a hell of a way to start. You know, like at the beginning <laughs> at the beginning of the film career. Um, so I just want to know, like, what what do you remember about actually being on that set? And did you have uh, any idea that was going to be such a huge film? I had a blast. Yeah, I mean, kind of. It was back in the day when I mean they were still shooting it on film. It was like kind of classic in a way like and, and will ferrell getting to watch will ferrell every day i mean the the movie that ended up on the cutting room floor is insane as well it's watching those guys work together it was like this i you know from the minute one joke one that it was going to be a big movie um and uh also todd phillips was the director and i had done a series of commercials with him before so that's how i got the role and he was like rob we'll give you some lines but i'm probably gonna cut them i just want us to get this up front like if you just want to hang out on set and have some fun and be the guy behind luke wilson that's it you can do it if you want it's here and i was like hell yeah this is great and i had the best time i just i had a blast but the other thing, though, is as someone who wants to work in the industry, the only way you can really learn is to actually watch it up close. Oh, so much learning. I, I mean, so much learning, like when I the commercial that I did with Todd Phillips, like in all those commercials I did, you learn a little bit. But yeah, that that was mostly uh, a learning experience, old school and, and such a low pressure learning experience because I really had nothing to do except stand there and be like, you know, that was my role. Sure. Um, jumping uh, forward a little bit, you were obviously on Daily Show with Jon Stewart. Um, obviously. Guess, yeah, obviously. I guess the first thing I want to know is, what do we have to do, and the world, what do we have to do to get John this October to do like a few weeks worth of whatever the fuck he wants to do to talk about the election and getting undecided people to vote? Because... Um, I need him to do things to help get someone out of the office. All right. I would listen. I don't I I'm going to say leave John alone, everybody. Leave John alone. OK, he is it up. He's on a farm in upstate New York, raising rescued cattle to their full. Of, you've never seen cows this big because they're never allowed to grow to the, the, the size that he that he he lets them grow. Let, let him let him do his. Th he's hasn't he done enough? No, absolutely. haven't we asked enough of him? But you know, I respect what you're saying, and I really do. And I want to leave him alone. However, I feel like the country is in such dire straits that, like, we just need him to help get back on the right path, and then we can totally leave him I alone. I, I totally hear you. It's like Batman, you know, is finally retires, and he's like gonna finally live a happy life. Uh, and maybe find a woman and then, you know, uh, then then uh, Bane knocks over a, a mint, a national mint. And, you know, then then he's got to be Batman again. Um, well, I don't know. I uh, John, the, my last day, my his last week at The Daily Show, I was I was um, or maybe his last month. He was uh, I was one of the guests on the couch. And I was getting my makeup in, and he came in and sat down, and we were just chatting while I was getting my makeup on. He goes, how is it? I went, how's what? And he was like, how is getting up, you know, when the sun is out and um, having breakfast with your children and, and walking them to school and then picking them up after school and, 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 and that whole thing? How is, how is that? And I went, it's fantastic, man. You're going to love it. <laughs> so. You'll have to drag him kicking and screaming. Completely. Your Batman's, last Batman's retired. Right. Your last joke in 2006, I believe, was a poop joke. Yeah, um, I believe that. Right. How early on did you know you wanted to end with a poop joke? <laughs> oh, um, I don't know. I guess I'd never given it that much thought. But when they gave me the script, I, uh, I didn't fight it. <laughs> I didn't fight them on the joke. I was like, well, yeah, of course. Got it. Um, I, I, it's nice to be known by the writers. Sure. You have, um, I want to make sure I'm, I'm doing, uh, uh, I'm looking at my little note, but over the last number of years, you got to co-host WWE Raw. You got to work opposite Dwayne Johnson on Ballers. 
You got mm-hmm. to be in a movie called Hot Tub Time Machine. Um, you played a sex offender on Curb Your Enthusiasm, among a million other things. Um, have you yet played the lottery? And if not, why not? <laughs> oh, um, yeah. I mean, I think I played the lottery when I told called up my parents and, and said, I think I'm going to be an actor instead of a doctor. Um, but uh, no, I, I, uh, I'm, I'm uh, a very lucky person. Oh, you I'm really should be playing the lottery. Lucky. I okay. I am. Um, I can't. I have no uh, holes to poke in that argument. I, I'll start playing the logger, lottery. Right. That's I'm, it. I'm gonna start playing um, online games of chance. Right. Exactly. Uh, I'm out. Uh, no, I'm, I'm joking. But I'm, I agree. I agree with you. It's preposterous. L- listen, uh, you are co-hosting, if I'm not mistaken, Top Gear America. Yeah. Right. So right. that's uh, again. This goes back to the lottery thing. I so know, I know. When when does the series show actually come out? And well, I guess No, oh. yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, nobody's sure anymore with the with the with the everything being shut down. So, we've we we were supposed to have wrapped by now and we only shot 4 out of our first 12 episodes um before we all had to go home. So, uh uh so, so the I believe the premiere date was supposed to be pretty soon, and it's it's indefinite at this point. Uh, no, no, no. That's what I was going to ask you. I was going to. I was curious where you were in the filming process. Like, you, you know what oh. I mean. So with those, yeah. you you shot a few episodes. Uh, can you tease people on some of the cool shit you got to do or see? Yeah, man. It's you know what. I, I don't want to. I don't. I don't. They haven't told me not to say anything. I don't necessarily want to give too much away, but I will say that I. You know, I, I am not the other two hosts. Uh, Dax is sort of the gearhead, you know, from Detroit, and Jethro Bobbington is a really respected um, car journalist and car reviewer, and and it's sort of like the Encyclopedia Brown of the show. And uh, and I am the pig and shit, basically. I'm like, I am the audience. I'm so happy to be there, and. And and that I think is that's my favorite part about the show, and that's what I think people can expect is that it, it, you go to Top Gear, you watch Top Gear for the relationships between the characters, between the hosts, and we we are really get on, getting along well. And what is what kind of job is this? I get to drive awesome cars really fast, uh, un, in unsafe conditions. It's it's a dream come true. I I I, I don't know why you even want me to play the lottery. Like I've won, no, I mean, what else have I got to win? I actually realized something. I screwed up by saying this to you. I should have said, um, "Can you please give me some numbers to play in the lottery?" And then oh, I yeah, played. Yeah. yeah, you want me to generate some numbers for you? After towards the end of the interview, yes. Gotcha. At the end, um, I love last week tonight uh, with John Oliver. I think what he's doing each week is uh, phenomenal. I believe you got you were on like a month ago, or am I mistaken? Yeah. So a is that one weeks, of those yeah. things? Yeah, what, is that one of those things when they call that you are like, um, yeah, I, I'm on. I can do this. Yeah, oh, well, they've had me on a couple times before, mostly doing voiceovers and stuff. So, I mean, we're friends. John and I are friends, and, and uh, Tim Carvel, the head writer over there, and I are good friends. So, like, we... I'm just sort of uh, in their stable, you know? Um, and this one, this bit we just did, it was like, oh, this guy's got a, the script says he's got to eat a meatball sub in a funny way. We should call Cordry for that. He eats meatball subs in re- a really funny way. <laughs> um, do, you, do you watch it on a weekly basis, though? Because I, I really mean it sincerely. I think John's doing incredible work. Yeah, he is. I, I um. Yeah, I, I, and yes, as regular as anything that I do, uh, I watch that show. I, it's, uh, I'm so glad it's, it's, it's the result of what, what you can do with a show like The Daily Show if you have all week to prepare for one show. It, and he really is locked in, man. Yeah, that, it, that's it, great. It's no, great. I, no. I was going to say that I do think that if Jon Stewart had a week, uh, obviously he would be murder. He could have murdered, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's incredibly challenging yeah. on a daily basis to be what John did on a daily basis was incredible. Um, yeah. 
you know, but anyway, I'm just, I, I think that uh, John Oliver has done, you know, just really good stuff in terms of shining a light on issues that might not normally have it. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Agreed. Uh, Agreed. Uh, I definitely have to touch on Ballers real quick, just because uh, I was a, you know, I, I watched every episode. I was a big fan of the show. Um, oh, cool. Thanks. When you when you signed on, the show started in 2015. When you signed on, did you have any idea that this thing could go for five years, or were you like, it might go because it's Dwayne Johnson? Like this could be good. Yeah, I was counting on seven to tell you the truth. <laughs> it was it was the one. It was a pretty sure thing because it's Dwayne Johnson, man. Like I knew that we could conceivably do this show for a hundred years. It, it's all up to Dwayne. Right, exactly. uh, and that that's basically what what happened. Like Dwayne decided he couldn't do it anymore with his schedule, and uh, we had to stop doing it. But but um, he uh, I I every year was a gift, basically. Well, one of the things though, and um, was that when Dwayne started, when you guys started in 2015, Dwayne was very popular, and he had you know a number of movies, and but over the course of Ballers, his career took this. Yeah trajectory that just it became like a skyrocketing career yeah. where he be well, like yeah. just you know and so did, what was that like because in 2015 he was popular but by the fifth year he's another level well he was by 2015 he was uh, enough of a star like to for me to have come to the conclusion that i could be doing this for 100 years right like um but the the real it was wild watching. It was really like the first year, maybe the first season or two, watching his, the 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 shift. I mean, he be, that's when he became the biggest celebrity in the world, and he wasn't that when we started. Uh, so that shift was um, it was wild because he's just the same guy when he comes into work. He's not like, hey, did you hear, guys? I'm the number one celebrity in the world. So. I'm going to be different now, you know, so it's, it's hard to sort of track it as a, as a coworker and friend, you know? Sure. I was going to say that I've interviewed him. I've been lucky enough to interview him a few times and he sincerely is one of the nicest people. Yeah, he's great. I mean, you can't be that man. I think I've probably said this to you a zillion times before, but I really mean it. Like you can't be that magnetic on screen and not have a, a dynamic personality you know, in real life. And he really does. He's, he's, um, he's everything you want him to be. Now, are, are you a big sports fan? Because I would imagine being on ballers, having athletes on it, uh, would maybe get you better seats at sporting events because of ballers. Or did that not happen? Shit. I don't get <laughs> shit. I don't get anything. We're, I, I miss the year, the days of the freebies, man. I don't get anything. Uh, no, but yes, I, I'm a big sports fan. Um, I try to be respectful of my wife because she's not into sports and, and really just only watch one religiously. So I, cho I chose football. Um, but uh, so but uh, no, I mean, I can, you know, I know some of these athletes now I can probably get in. I just don't want to. I don't I feel like I feel weird using my celebrity or my contact to get a better seat at something. I don't know. It makes me feel icky. I understand that, but you know, I guess I, I was thinking that maybe it wouldn't be more about you calling someone, and maybe it's more like when you were filming Ballers, like people reaching out and being like, you know, hey, come to this event because I want to be on Ballers next season. Oh no, 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 no! Don't go to me for that. Like, no, I'm number. I was number like five on the call sheet. Uh, there's, there's other people to 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 go to for that. I, they they they're smart. Got it. Um, when did you know? The final season had you and Dwayne sort of at odds and coming together by the end. Um, when did you know, what did you think about the series finale and, and where it ended? And, you know, was that what you were envisioning for it? Or you, you know what I mean? I, um, yeah, well, it, it, in terms of Ballers as a series, a series as a whole, it was definitely um, a satisfactory um wrap up i don't think it was a it didn't feel like a series wrap up to me it felt like a season wrap up you know so i don't know maybe there's a hopefully someday maybe more story to tell 
Um, I wish I had anything to do with that. Well, one of the things that I really commended the show and what I really enjoyed is that I do think that the NCAA takes advantage of so many athletes in this country. And it's, you know, it's despicable yeah. what this organization does. And I was very, very happy to see the show taking the NCAA on front yeah. and center. And, and that's great. Like, yeah, no, that's a real thing for me because these athletes deserve yeah. money. They're putting their, yeah. their bodies on the line and um, it's outrageous, you know, the way yeah. the NCAA treats these people. Yeah, they're not definitely not shy uh, there about um, about tackling like the real stories behind the stories in football. You know, that was what I liked about the show a lot. Um, and and uh, yeah, that was a particularly satisfying season. Um, also, just like anything that sort of pokes holes in in the NFL's philosophy, their their general way of doing business, their business model. I enjoy as well because you know they're they're some of the worst of of uh, you know any major corporation their their behavior and their their decision making models. It's uh, so I love watching the game. I hate I hate the organization. It's so funny. Uh, I'm in the exact same page. I, I think the game is unbelievable. I love watching it. Um, it's just disappointing that the owners. You know, I look at this new contract, not to get into the minutia, but the owners get like 52% of all the yeah. revenue and the players get 48% and they're yeah. the ones who sacrifice their bodies for the, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It makes the game, it makes the game less enjoyable to me. Uh, the way, knowing, knowing that this is the organization sponsoring it, 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 um, you know, it, it, it compromises the, the actual sport. Yeah. Um, before I run out of time, I'm, I'm basically uh, I've taken a lot of your time and I appreciate it. But I am curious, you you uh, write a lot of stuff and you create a lot of stuff. What have you been kicking around in terms of other ideas that you might be trying to bring to life? Oh, I'm working on a, um, a script right now with a couple of my medical police children's hospital partners, Rob Hubel and John Stern. Um and it's way too early to to say anything about it, but it is definitely not a uh, typical like our typical brand of like you know absurdity. Uh, it's more reality world reality based. Um, it's it's an it takes place in our world basically. And um, I don't know, but I, we'll, we'll, I'm, we're working it out right now. I mean, I'll ha I have a Zoom meeting in about you know 45 minutes. Right. That, that's and uh, what's your Zoom backdrop? Do you actually change it? Well, you notice that I have this here. Sure. Uh, this green screen back here, but that is for a camera that I have over my computer, so it's useless with this thing. Uh, I can't do it with Zoom. I should have thought bigger. <laughs> of course. Um, so for the people that have stuck with us this entire time, uh, bad therapy is the reason I got to talk to you today. Right. Am, right. Right, exactly. Um, it comes out, I just want to make sure people realize, April 17th, it's on uh, on demand video. You know what I mean? You can get it at home. You um, know what I mean. You guys know. Just do it, get it, watch it. Yeah, April 17th, bad therapy. Yeah. Just trying to say it a few more times to make sure people got it. Um, April 17th. But, right. Um, but sincerely, um, thank you so much for giving me uh, a tremendous amount of time today. And, uh, you know, and make sure that you um, email me privately the numbers I should be playing in the lottery. OK, it's always good talking to you, man. Uh, I feel like you're 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 a, I, I love talking to a familiar face. You're it's a, I feel like I'm uh, hanging out with a friend. Also fellow mass hole. And fe well, I didn't know that about you. That's so funny. I, I don't know if we'd ever talk about that. I grew up near um, the stadium. Oh, far yeah. out. Yeah, that's so cool. Down there, there by uh, where the uh, NK NKTOB, I think, were f down there. Uh, New Kids on the Block. A couple of them moved uh, down. Uh, well, they moved Fall River. Um, I forget it. All right, I'll talk to you later. Hey, listen. Thanks so much, man. Have a great day. Yeah. Bye.